Our guest on Perspectives today is Ashabula County Prosecutor Colleen O'Toole. Hello, Colleen. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, I don't think I've ever asked anybody questions about Abu Dhabi before, but you were uh, sent there to assist the de legal, the judicial department there in modernizing and improving their procedures and practices. How did that come about, and, and what did you learn from that? Well, the Abu Dhabi uh, Judicial Department, specifically the Emirate of Abu Dhabi, which is the capital mm -hmm. of the United Arab Emirates, was looking to modernize their commercial law um, court and the systems and the laws in which they're using because they are trying to, you know, become more modern, but more importantly, attract foreign investment, particularly from the West. Um, and as a byproduct of that, um, they basically needed uh, folks who were experienced in that regard uh, so that people feel confident of coming from the West and, you know, investing their money. So sure. sure that they were going to get a fair shake and that they understood the rules. So they put out the um, request because they wanted two American judges to come in, and I was uh, one of two selected out of, like, over 350 applicants to wow. assist them in their endeavor. Yeah, I was very honored, and it was a great experience. I guess. Speaking of judges, you were with the 11th District Court of Appeals, and I kind of ask this question a lot um, with people in your circumstances, is you were a judge, so you had to be kind of, well, you, you definitely had to, you had to look at both sides and, and try to be fair and all, and then you're a prosecutor, and you have to be looking at finding the guy guilty. Um, a lot of times it's the, the reverse of that. People are prosecutors, and then they have to set their minds to you know, being more impartial. How, how do you change? How do you change your mindset on something like that? Like, oh, wait a minute! No, I'm not supposed to find the person guilty. I'm supposed to uh, uh, look at it all ways. Yeah. No, your your point is very well taken, and um, it's it, it's something I think that's inherent when you train in the area of law, right? What is mm -hmm. your role, right? So, a good lawyer can argue as effectively for the defense as they can for, for the prosecution. Mm -hmm. They're good, right? They should have that ability and that discipline to put their personal bias aside and to, um, you know, and to go forward based on the law, right? We're a system of laws, not men. And I think that comment goes directly to, you know, doing what we feel versus doing what we're supposed to do under the law. And, you know, it's a challenge. And the judge's role is completely different in that you have to weigh both sides equally. And so that, yet yeah, still is another discipline, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's definitely all about the law. So that's kind of how I do it anyway. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and on the other side of things, the Public Defender's Office, they're, um, I don't know how much input you have on that, but they're abolishing it in June. It's a, kind of a private agency that um, takes over cases for indigents. Uh, indigent defendants, because apparently being in crime is not a um, money-making proposition. <laughs> right. So they they want to make it a public. Crime doesn't pay. That's right. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, public. Uh, it's a public agent. They, they're they're talking about creating a public agency to replace that. Can you explain kind of why they're you know what your th feelings are on that and why they would be doing that? You know, for a long time it was like privatize everything, and now we're kind of publicizing everything. Yeah, that's, uh, there, are, there are four different provisions for indigent um, public defense. Mm -hmm. So state, state v. Gideon, right, says if you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. Sure. Um, and so it's a problem, you know, all over, and funding it is even a bigger problem. But uh, the commissioners decided to go to a direct public defender system versus a not-for-profit corporation, which kind of did the same thing. Like before, the commissioners would pay the um, the public defender commission, who would then pass the check to the not-for-profit, who would then pay the public defenders for the exact same service that they would be providing if they went just directly and reported to just the public defender commission. So one is one was privatized in a 501c3, I believe, and the other one will be, they will technically come under the guise of county employees at that point. If they, so it's a direct relationship to the commissioners and the public defender commission, 
they will be considered um, government employees, just like the prosecutor. And um, the commissioner's position is that it, it gives them a little bit more direct um, control over budgeting and mm-hmm. other items. So it, it's an improvement. It's definitely more efficient. It cuts out a couple layers. And actually, um, the public defenders will now be able to take advantage of the public employee's retirement system and all the other benefits that all the county employees get. Which is so good. So actually, they're going to be better. They're, it's better than private sector, clearly. It pays less, but <laughs> their salaries aren't going to change. So, What do you think, um, ballpark figure, the percentage of people that are charged with a crime that need legal counsel? Oh, hi. Uh, um, I would say probably 80%, 85%. Yeah. I mean, depending, right? You don't need, most people don't, they can afford an attorney if they have, like, you know, an, a traffic ticket or an OVI, right? Mm. But when you get into the point mm. of, you know, multiple counts and pretty serious crimes, um, you know, by that point, the people are incarcerated, you know, because they're waiting bond or whatever, and it, it's super expensive, right? Right. Death penalty, death penalty defense. Uh, is well into seven figures on both sides. Um, so there aren't too many people that can afford the that. Or something else that you're accused of, right? It could be anywhere from fifty to one hundred thousand dollars just for the lawyer. Yeah. So there's another reason not to commit murder. It's, it's expensive. <laughs> More than one, other than going to the jail or potential death penalty. Yeah, not being able to afford a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> it is financially ruinous, basically. Yeah. Um. The other, or last week or so, Board of Elections, they're asking to hire separate legal counsel because they think there's a conflict of interest with your office. Um, I guess there were some comments made at a Republican committee meeting. I'm not sure what it's what went on there at all, but can you kind of enlighten us on all that? Yes, um, and if you want, I can send you the memorandum that have, have been uh, disseminated. Uh, they're part of the public record. But okay. it, the, the event originated after a failure to reorganize as required under the statute for the Board of Elections. And as you're aware, Board of Elections has two Democrats, two Republicans. It's right. very evenly balanced politically, so it's an inherently political office. Um, the issue was, and, and it was a, you know, a good issue to look at. Um, if the participation of the prosecutor uh, created some form of conflict of interest, um, uh, you know, because I am a Republican office holder, right? Mm-hmm. Um, all of the commissioners are Republican office holders, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the fact that we're going to have Republican office holders holding office and doing their job, we're, we're back to the same issue, right? How do you divide? How do you divide your personal opinion with that of your legal? duty and role and obligation. So the statute is very clear in what makes a conflict of interest. Um, and it does that because the prosecutor is designated as the attorney for all county offices. And that's a cost controlling mechanism, right? We don't want all of the individual county offices going out and hiring their own lawyers at state's expense. It could get very expensive. Yes. So <laughs> the statute says there's only very limited interest where there is a conflict. And it is usually a pecuniary interest or a, um, you know, or, or a familial interest, right? So if my family member was there, there would be a conflict. Uh, if I stood to gain monetarily from one of these decisions, it would be a conflict. Or if the position of my clients was contrary to another client. So if uh, the commissioners wanted to sue the Board of Elections. I represent both of them. There would be a conflict, obviously, yes. right? So in the case of you don't like what I say or you don't like the advice I give as your attorney, that doesn't qualify as a conflict. It may qualify as a bias, um, but um, conflicts are very specialized and delineated under the law. And the fact that my recommendations have been approved and um, by the Secretary of State means basically that they were correct, right? I mean, so sure. the Secretary of State also agreed with my legal opinions on all these issues. And so, unfortunately, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's no <laughs> conflict legally. I'm sorry they're unhappy with me. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, being a county prosecutor, your clients sometimes are unhappy with you. Sometimes you have to tell your clients bad news. Right. right? And it's just your job. So I follow the law. If there's a conflict, I would readily recuse myself. But in this case, there's not one. 
I'm thinking of another instance where there's a conflict was when, like, uh, Kanye City Councilman Phil Garcia was charged, and the the judges. I don't know if the prosecutor's office um, reclused itself from that case as well, but because he yeah. was a, a Kanye City official. Well, that that's correct. So, depending on if the Kanye prosecutor mm-hmm. represented the. Um, you know, would would be representing or giving legal advice to the council, right? And mm-hmm. then now he had to prosecute one of the council people. That that would create a conflict because he may be called as a witness, or um, you know, he can't wear both hats. Right. right? Well, one so, of the, no, go ahead. It's, diver, it's divergent interests is what is really like a good denominator that you're looking at. If if my if my legal interest differs from your legal interest, or or the two of them are opposite, then that kind of sends up a little bit of a flag that you need to look at it for conflict. And kind of segue into the next question is, there might be conflicts of interest, but it's be, part of it is because your office has so many responsibilities. That, that's correct. You know, you really mm. have to navigate that. And the key to that is transparency and a lot of collaboration and really making sure that everybody knows where you stand and communicating to all of them, right? I mean, the, 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 the rule, I think, or at least what I've been trying to do, is like no surprises, you know? Mm-hmm. If, something, well, if, something, if something is going to come out of this office, everybody knows about it, and they know about it in advance, and um, they know the position, and, you know, you just ask, it, let people ask as many questions as they want so they understand why or what's happening with it, right? You, you try to solve the problem, right? G- give us some examples of, the re- first of all, how many people are employed by your office, and some examples of the responsibilities, things the county prosecutor's office does the average person may not know about. Okay. Um, we have about 28 employees, some part-time, some full-time. Um, we have a civil division and a criminal division, right? Mm-hmm. So we divide them in half. We're more heavy on the civil, I mean, the criminal side. Um, but the, the, the interesting things that the prosecutor works on, like, we have a, we're in charge of the VOCA, um, you know, the, the victim's um, help, you know, right. the, the, the area, so we do that, which is something I was surprised that we did, um, but we, we help all the victims, so if a victim needs somebody to go to court with them, you know, we have people that go to court with them. Which, right? which so happens maybe, quite often. Well, right. Yeah. Right? About a third of our cases have third-party victims, so many cases, most of the cases, as I'm sure you're not surprised, are drug-related cases. Yes. Right? So those youth, or you have like corporate defendants, shoplifting, you know, or drugs, right? Um, but a third of them actually have like real people in their neighborhoods whose homes have been broken into, or they've been victims of domestic violence, um, or their children, right, who have been sexually molested. And so the victim's role and the victim advocate role is very important. Um, another, another thing we do, which is kind of surprising, is we do all the union negotiations. Um, <laughs> 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 never thought it, never saw that one coming. Uh, this year we have we have uh, twelve union contracts which are up, which we will be engaged in union negotiations for the county and its entities. Um, we represent the Department of Developmental Disabilities. We represent a nursing home. <laughs> that's be that's um, right because the county owns a nursing home. That's right. That's right. Right, and we work very closely with the sheriff, and uh, you know, trying to just find out where their roles are. I mean, they're also our client, right? The sheriff's our client. Sure. We got about a minute to go, but also all of the townships, correct? You're the law director for all 27 townships. We got a lot here. And some of them are big. (laughs) Well, they're big and they're, they're interesting. Like, do you, you know, how do you sell your fire truck? (laughs) Right. Uh, Can you give away a slot of land that you really don't want anymore? Because it's just too small to develop. How do you do that? Right. Um, can we build a road? Uh, can we build a road here, or are we going to impose on somebody else's property? What are our rights? You know, so yeah, it's very diverse. It's very interesting, actually. I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it, and I feel very fortunate to have this position. So you're happy that uh, with the job so far? Yes, I'm, I'm. I'm very happy because it's probably one of the most interesting jobs I ever had. There are some days, however, depending on when you catch me, that. <laughs> <laughs> County Prosecutor Colleen O'Toole, thank you very much for being with us today. Yes, 
feel free to call me anytime, and thanks for thinking of me. All right. Okay. Thank you. I'm Bob Lebzelder on Perspectives.